Since the introduction of streaming platforms, the true crime genre has grown substantially, and it only seems to be gaining popularity over time. A new true crime film, television program, or documentary appears to be released every other week in our culture, which is why Dennis Lehane's Blackbird is one of the newest and most intriguing examples. We've put up a selection of criminal television programs today that we believe you'll really like and are comparable to Blackbird. First, Mindhunter. Mindhunter is based on genuine incidents that have been fabricated for television. It centers on fictional characters who play off real FBI agents from the 1970s, who assisted in the development of the criminal profiling of serial killers. The show revolves around two agents called Holden Ford, Jonathan Groff, and Billy Tench, Holt McCallany, who are in command of the Behavioral Science Department at the FBI Academy in Quantico, Virginia, where the majority of the action takes place. A serial murderer series that never actually actually shows serial murders strikes one as a little odd. The focus of the show is on interacting with the serial killers and convincing them to spill their secrets in the hopes of getting just close enough to see the bottom of each killer's individual abyss without falling in. Yes, it presents a number of serial killers, but the majority of them are in prison. Mindhunter never actually displays the horrifying murders, instead, it only ever shows the aftermath of them, as seen in the scattered crime scene photos and the chalk outlines. Mindhunter is a narrative about the power of words, stories, and memories in a genre that is so frequently emphasized by violence, both sexual and otherwise. Mindhunter excels at the challenging task of never showing the viewer what they're meant to fear, while still terrifying them sufficiently and frequently through clever camera selection, superb acting, and finely calibrated conversation. Second, An Alienist. A 1994 Caleb Carr novel of the same name, served as the inspiration for the American historical drama television series The Alienist. A hastily assembled squad in the middle of the 1890s in New York City is made up of Daniel Bruhl, Luke Evans, and Dakota Fanning to investigate a serial killer who is preying on street children. The series uses historical figures like Theodore Roosevelt, who held the position of police commissioner from 1895 to 1897 to blend fact with fiction. The second season of The Alienist, Angel of Darkness, began on July 19, 2020. A follow-up series based on the 1997 sequel novel The Angel of Darkness was then ordered in 2018. The Alienist's discussions between its numerous characters are masterfully written and thoughtfully chosen, and they do an excellent job of bringing the various characters to life. The methodically timed plot that drives the remainder of the series makes up for rare times where particular lines seem forced or constricted. The Alienist has outstanding production value. There's no denying that it flawlessly portrays the mood and tone of the era, whether it be in a bustling marketplace teeming with people or a dismal lane lit by a solitary flickering lamplight. The inclusion of current social problems facing the nation, such as the suffragette movement, gives the alienist setting the feel of a genuine living metropolis rather than an expensively manufactured television set. Third, Ratchet. The American psychological thriller television series Ratchet starring Sarah Paulson as nurse Mildred Ratchet, was co-created by Ryan Murphy and Evan Romansky. It is a precursor to Milo Forman's 1975 film One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, which was based on Ken Kesey's 1962 novel of the same name. Even though it takes place in a different location, California as opposed to Oregon, it depicts Mildred Ratchet's life before the events in the film. Ratchet, which received a two-season order, had its Netflix debut in September 2020. Explaining the roots of depraved female characters like Nurse Ratched is nothing new. The trend has revealed a demand for feminist reappraisals of narratives that were not previously considered, regardless of whether it was inspired by the authors of the character's genuine curiosity or by movie studios sensing an opportunity. In Paulson's interpretation of Ratched, Mildred's rage and loneliness are transformed into the person that most people are familiar with. Ratched also stands out for its vivid color scheme of reds, greens, and other strong colors that provide the audience with context for the actions while still invoking a sense of dread. Fourth, Beyond Evil. The South Korean television show Beyond Evil is set in a tiny village where there have been a lot of killings. Han Ju Won, Yo Jin Gu, the future police commissioner of Seoul, who holds a highly ranking post despite his age, and Lee Dong Sik, Shin Ha Kyung, a police officer who was demoted from his previous position as a detective, are our two 
primary protagonists. One of those rare pieces of art that stays in the mind long after it ended is Beyond Evil. Throughout its entire run, Beyond Evil has no qualms about examining and portraying both the noble and abhorrent sides of humanity. Outstanding performers Shin Hye Kyun and Yo Jin Gu provide one of the best performances in Beyond Evil. The entirety of the plot is driven by their characters, and if not for their tremendously nuanced, vivid performances, this could have easily been a significant flaw. The huge cast of individuals is essential because each one of them is hiding a secret. As these secrets are revealed, the drama frequently returns to its title while avoiding the obvious question of what evil is. Instead, it shows that evil, far from being flamboyant or exaggerated, is often unobtrusive, widespread, and all too plain. The directing is improved by Sim Na Yeon. Close-ups, slow panning, and tracking shots are used to show viewers how confined the characters feel in their heads and how claustrophobic small communities can be. Fifth, Hannibal. The connection between Dr. Hannibal Lecter, a forensic psychiatrist who is destined to become Will Graham's most cunning opponent, while also being the only person who can comprehend him, and FBI Special Investigator Will Graham, played by Hugh Dancy, is the focus of the show. Characters from Thomas Harris's books Red Dragon, 1981, Hannibal, 1999, and Hannibal Rising serve as inspiration, 2006. The performances of the main performers and the aesthetic of the show were received high praise from the critics. Hannibal has a sizable fan base and is considered as one of the best horror television programs by critics and audiences alike. Yet, due to its heightened aesthetic, bombastic speech, and shocking, sickening flashes of violence, it cannot be mistaken for comfort television. One of Hannibal's best qualities is how it changes with each new season. The second season switches to a more intense psychological battle between Graham and Lecter, culminating in a dramatic season finish that's as surprising as it is satisfying. The first season carefully adhered to figuring out serial killer profiles based on Will and Hannibal's abilities. Season 3 isolates a few of the main characters and relocates the action to Europe, launching the television show into a world of suspense and mystery that is almost wholly symbolic. Sixth, Manhunt. Martin Clunes plays Detective Chief Inspector Colin Sutton in the British television drama Manhunt, which centers on a murder investigation. The focus the focus of the first season was on the actual investigation into the death of French student Émilie de Lagrange. For a protracted manhunt, Levi Belfield was eventually located. He had been sought after for the murder of de Lagrange and several other notorious but unsolved crimes. Sutton's pursuit of a notorious Southeast London serial rapist who tormented hundreds of individuals over a 17-year period is the main plot point of the second season. Manhunt is truly excellent, since it feels very authentic. Authentic. This is probably due to the fact that the program is based on the officer's memoirs, who oversaw the actual inquiry. The process is therefore unquestionably as accurate as can be expected in terms of what actually happened, what the cops did, and how the investigation progressed. Because it focuses more on the recounting of the incident, the processes, the difficulties, and the facts of the case than on any dramatic moments or sensationalized descriptions of the killings, Manhunt occasionally has the feel of a documentary. Martin Clunes excels as the unflinching Colin Sutton. Additionally, he conveys Sutton's methodical, immensely adept, and discreet oversight of the investigation. Clunes maintains a low profile and does an excellent job of expressing Sutton's confidence in his instincts and ideas. Finally, Oz. It was the first hour-long drama that HBO produced, and it was also the first to start receiving well-deserved plaudits from critics. Oz ran for six seasons, starting in 1997 and ending in 2003. The fictional Oswald State Correctional Facility, formerly known as the Oswald State Penitentiary, is referred to as Oz. It is a level 4 maximum security state prison. Oz is a show that doesn't hesitate to show facets of life that the majority of viewers are ignorant of, such as the nuanced connections between acquaintances. Violence plays a significant role in the show, even if a lot of it is overt. Despite some faults in the fictional depiction of the prison, 
system, Oz is nevertheless a fantastic series because of its top-notch storytelling and great cast. Thanks to actors like Ernie Hudson, Terry Kinney, Iman Walker, Edie Falco, J.K. Simmons, and many other talented cast members, the production is tremendously passionate and poignant. In Oz, we are transported to the Oswald State Penitentiary, a place where dangerous criminals would use whatever means at their disposal in order to survive. With a wide variety of relationships and stories, it enthralls and draws you in. With his compelling characters and realistic conflict, Oz has a true understanding of how to evoke strong emotions in his viewers. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Comment below which of the films you might have watched, and how you would rate them against Blackbird.